Welcome back to an episode that I'm recording very early. I literally just woke up to talk to Tom Warren. Tom, how are you doing? Hello. And the I'm episode. Good. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. Of course. The show is Destin Talks to Random People. See, I'm so tired. I forgot to say the name of the show. <laughs> I just made up the name on the. It's what is a it? 8 a.m. Yeah, it's super early. It's yeah. 8 in the morning. Yeah. I'm normally up at like 6, but I was up late last night playing Suicide Squad. Uh, so. Trying to get a feel for the end game of that and. I'm to some sort of determination about it. Anyway, uh, right. but Tom's here. Tom, let's pretend people don't know who you are. They might, they might not. Uh, yeah, what do you do? Maybe. How do people know? I, I am a senior editor at The Verge. Um, I pre predominantly cover Microsoft, so all the export stuff, um, but also a lot of their tech stuff. Um, that's predominantly my, my sort of background. Um, so I'm, I'm a writer. I do some YouTube stuff, but I sort of dabble in that. I'm not really, I'm not a professional like you are. Um, and yeah, so I, I started at The Verge. Do you, do, you want, do you want my full backstory? Yes. I want the, the okay. villain arc and the, and the history, <laughs> the, my whole the redemption. Arc, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so i i'm not a trained like journalist or anything like that um it's just something that i've always done and i always kind of did it on the side so i grew up like building pcs just like in windows and you know nerding out and all that sort of stuff um and i sort of started out doing it support sort of stuff so i was working in a bunch of banks um sort of free uh, freelancing if we call it uh, contracting um doing a bunch of that. And then on the side, I was kind of blogging and breaking Microsoft stories and, you know, getting internal documents and just putting them out there on the internet. Just, I don't know, as a, as a teenager, essentially. Um, and then, so I started at the verge about 12 years ago. Um, that was the first time I did it before that. I started a blog called wind rumors, um, which I started whilst I was still working side by side. So, um, yeah, so that's how I've kind of come through into where I am now, reporting predominantly on Microsoft my entire life, really. So since I was like, I don't know, like 15, 16, really, I was blogging away. Wow. I haven't, I haven't even covered Microsoft that long. I mean, I followed, I followed all the stuff when Bill Gates and Apple, when that drama was happening, right. when I was in high school, I read about the yeah. history there between those two, watched those uh, made-for-TV shows about Silicon right, Valley yeah. and all that <laughs> stuff. I've always been interested in the company and what they're mm -hmm. up to. And I, I think when Bill Spencer took over is when I really started to, to pay attention to what's yeah. going on in terms of leadership and, and their strategies. And then uh, I'm not even joking. I know I'm, I'm somewhat known for the Xbox Game Pass meme. But when Game Pass started <laughs> oh, yeah. taking over, I'm like, Xbox has like a winning strategy here. For, for the future yeah. of their brand. And a lot of people joked about it. Like nobody was covering Xbox right. the way I was when I really started going for the channel. It like right. the, the, there was a lot of negativity around Xbox. Some would say there still is. Sure. I, yeah. I think yeah. it's lightened up a little bit and I don't mean to give my backstory, but it's, it's cool to hear that there are other people in the space. And I think that's why you're known and respected in the space that have just been interested in the, the, going goings on with xbox yeah, essentially over the last yeah. several years What's yeah because I, I kind of picked up on the export stuff like covering that a lot more intensely i think around the exports one era really um like as that was coming to fruition um just because it was like i don't know the way they went after the home right like and the we all know tv 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 yeah um <laughs> but that sort of yeah around that era it was it was, it was getting very interesting it's, it's only got more interesting really over the last decade so yeah and i'm curious besides activision blizzard because i think we can all agree that's probably the biggest thing that happened in gaming for like the last 10 years maybe yeah. i don't know it's it's yeah. pretty substantial Besides that, what has interested you the most in terms of Xbox strategy these last few years? Yeah, I think with with the Xbox Series S and the X, like trying them trying to respond to obviously what they did wrong with the Xbox One um, and the consumer focus. There, I think that's been interesting. I think it's just it's super interesting to see when when they were obviously in the lead with Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty um, and some of that dare I say arrogance going into the Xbox one, um, with some of the executives that aren't there anymore. Um, and it's just interesting to see how that's changed when Phil's sort of taken the reins. Um, and I think it's better 
ultimately for consumers, right? Because when Microsoft's mm-hmm. pushed into a, a into a, you know a place where they have to compete, then everyone competes with them and they do better products, right? Like if they just dominate, it's never good having a yep. monopoly um, on anything. So I think just ha- having them compete with the Xbox Series S and the X and the Game Pass and all that sort of stuff has, has been it's been great to see because I think the Xbox One era was was a bit of a struggle. Um, I, no, I, don't, I don't think anyone not, would argue that. Be totally honest. <laughs> no. Yeah. And it's not that this era is particularly better in terms of sales, but I think they've been kind of, and this is, there's a lot, obviously a lot of chatter going on about this sort of stuff at the moment, but I mean, it's where mm-hmm. some Xbox fans haven't necessarily picked up on that it isn't necessarily about pure console sales for them anymore, right? Like it's, they are trying to diversify how they get people playing their games. Um, and I don't think the ABK stuff was about pure console sales either, mm-hmm. um, that acquisition. So I think it's just the, the shift in strategies, particularly I'd say after the pandemic as well, right? Um, yeah, and fo- focusing in on ABK. that, it does seem like everybody's shifting their strategy more towards digital. And yeah, I've seen... I find it a little strange that people have honed in on what Xbox has been doing in terms of uh, physical media and how there's these stories coming right. out about how, oh, so-and-so was talking about not doing physical media. It's like, we see that that was true for all physical media. So it's yeah. it's strange that the fact that there were discussions, I, and I guess I, I don't have the appropriate context, maybe you do. I don't know why it's significant that Xbox was in that conversation. Yeah. Because everybody was in that conversation. Yeah, I think it's a mix and where, where some of the context gets lost is like you see these big retailers like Walmart that are going to walk away from physical media potentially, not just Xbox, right? Like it, it will be across the board. Um, but then you've got Microsoft who's been, let's say, aggressively pushing this digital f- thing for a decade, right? They tried it with the Xbox One. It didn't go too well. I think the era that we're in now, it might have worked. Um, but it obviously didn't, but they've been slowly still trying to get towards that digital, um, space. And we've got things happening, right. With Xbox where like, um, we obviously they launched the series S as a digital console. Obviously Sony did one as well. Um, but a slightly different strategy there with the, the pricing and the target market and stuff. But then you've also got Hellblade 2 as announced as just pure digital. Um, so then people pick up on that and go, okay, what's happening? And you see these rumors of like European, um, retailers not stocking Xbox. Um, but also in the background of all that is that there's game pass, right? Um, so there are less physical sales for a start on Xbox anyway, and on, on any platform at the moment, it's just, that's been a major shift and it's been increased because of, because of the pandemic, but then it's particularly so on the Xbox platform because of game pass, um, and because of Microsoft's push for, for digital there. So I do, I think we, we saw the FTC leaks with the all digital Xbox series X. Like I think that combined with Hellblade two and some other stuff that we're seeing, I think it's pretty clear that they're, they're going to drop physical at some point. Right. Um, yeah, uh, whether delightfully, it's on every single release, all but. digital was the the verbiage in that document, yes. right? I, <laughs> I think, I think like Florian, you, me, we were like reading those documents at night and coming to our own conclusions. Yeah. And I would often reference The Verge and the work that you did because you would catch a thing right. that I didn't during that time, and it was really cool because I felt a lot of people were just talking about what you said versus reading the documents themselves. And you do get a little bit more of the nuance about what's going on when you've exactly. actually yeah. read all those emails and, and everything. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I think there's, there's a mixture of things going on, but I, I, I do think that, yeah, they probably are moving away from, from physical sales. Um, I agree. maybe, maybe not every single game, but I would expect that the vast majority of Xbox games in the future, um, maybe this year, um, won't be physical release so or very limited release right and and if you look at the numbers it's pretty apparent why physical sales are like very poor right now or or let me rephrase that they're a very small percentage of the overall market so to lose and when the retailers are already talking about getting rid of physical media anyway and just giving you a download download card it says a lot about like the infrastructures that are in place in terms of internet and what's available to people where people are playing, where are the biggest growth markets? It's in mobile, right? So yeah, exactly. pe- people really focus in on, oh, PlayStation sold, what is it? They're at like 30 million right now. Xbox is, yeah. is lagging behind. They're they're decreasing their console sales. And it's just like, well, you can literally play Xbox on more 
devices. So yeah. their sales figures I mean, are skewed. Yeah, I mean, you haven't needed an Xbox console to play Xbox games for, well, I don't know how many years now, but mm-hmm. they, they've all been published on PC. Microsoft's made that commitment for their first party games um, on, on several occasions. Um, and yeah, like, I don't think the console sales are, I mean, obviously they're still important, right? Like the hardware is still important. It's a big part of the platform. You wouldn't have Game Pass subscribers without the console, right? Like who's going to subscribe to it otherwise, yeah. um, apart from obviously on PC, but I mean, Xbox Game Pass console. Um, so it is still a big part of it, but um, yeah, like Do you think- the, the whole physical digital thing is, I don't know. Do you think- I, I, I get I get some of the like pushback to it because preservation oh, yeah. and stuff like that, but- for me, I haven't brought a physical game for, I mean, I do on Switch because I like to take the cartridge out and lend it to a friend, you know? Um, Online, so. you would think everybody buys physical media. Everybody I talk to in the real world, <laughs> like, no, they just don't, you know? And, they don't, and no. we've been headed that way for a long time. Like eight years yeah. ago, I made a video where 60% of the sales were already digital sales, right? right. So of yeah. course, we're going to continue developing into that strategy and it's unfortunate and i'd love yeah so i was was gonna say i'd love to see the platform holders really embrace that like uh, me being able to trade games for people digitally because we can do that right now with a disc i can sell it to someone i can go to a store which is what a bunch of people do you know you trade your disc in you get other games and all that sort of stuff or i lend it to a friend it'd be great if they found some way some business model to do that whether it was an extra five dollars a month to enable that sharing or something i don't know um but i would really want to see that in the digital sphere because there's no real ownership in digital right like it can be just if your account I don't know, gets flagged or something, you sent a bad email or some of like that, you, you, your account gets shut down. That's all your game's gone. You know, mm-hmm. there's not someone going to come walk in, open your door and steal all your Xbox discs. Right. So Xbox will just um, shut so it down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there are issues, but yeah. A little bit of latency between us and the UK, apparently the USA and the, you're in the UK, right? I am. Yeah. 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 You're like, no, I'm in it's California. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's almost like a satellite call sometimes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I am curious, though, like with everything, do you think Xbox still has a path to success in 2024? I feel like they're like, gr- gr- granted, that terminology is a little strange because they just fired 1,900 right. people, which is terrible. But in terms of yeah. customer, consumer facing game releases, will they be successful in 2024? Um, yeah, I think like 2024 is quite an interesting year, right? I think, I think the next couple of years leading up to whenever the next gen is going to drop are going to be super interesting. I mean, they've got, they've got to start delivering the big hitters, haven't they? Mm -hmm. Um, really? I mean, we, we've seen a few of them, um, but it hasn't been that, that big, that cadence, right? Like this, that Sony's managed on, on the, on the PlayStation side. So I think they really need to get into that. And that's something that. I feel like I say every year they need to do that. You know, mm-hmm. you, you, we need to see this. Um, so I think 2024, 2025, I would hope we'd start to see that. Um, we've got some some big ones coming this year. Got Avowed, um, Hellblade 2, um, obviously Indiana Jones as well. Um, so I think they're on, they're on the right track. Um, I think what might throw a cat amongst the pigeons um, or, or amongst the chickens or whatever you want to call it is the fact that they will start expanding some of these older first party exclusives to other platforms. Right. Um, which is obviously there's a, bu- there's a bunch of dialogue going on about that right at the moment. We've heard about like hi-fi rush and uh, sea of thieves, uh, potentially maybe a Forza, uh, potentially a, the Microsoft flight simulator. Um, these have all been sort of rumored lightly or heavily over the past few weeks. Um, and I think, like, I know that some of this is true. Um, like Hi-Fi Rush, I mean, we can pretty much clearly say that that's coming to PlayStation and Switch right now. Like, you're you're the, CC'd the on is, all the emails. I see them in all your articles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, it's, it's pretty obvious that that one's going to be coming at some point. Um, and I think that will set off a trigger point for some fans to wonder about the success of Xbox over the next couple of years. Um, I think it's going to be interesting to see how they actually explain it, right? 
um, because it's quite, I think Hi-Fi Rush in particular is quite a hard one to explain because Sea of Thieves is like, oh, sure, you know, it's a, um, it's it's not a, a single player game, you know. It's 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 a, a multiplayer a player game, and you want that sort of live service game across multiple platforms, right? Like that that can be pretty easily explained. Well, not easily, but more so um, than if you start saying your Forzas, your Starfields, your um, I don't know, uh, your High for Rush, and all all those sort of games, those sort of hero games. Um, if you start bringing those across then where does it end and that's, there's gonna be some big questions around that um and i think they they, they need to explain that clearly well so. i don't think they'll go that route but let's say hypothetically they did they expand their their uh purchase base i guess to 30 million more people over on playstation yeah. uh whatever the number i think they're at 114 million switch units sold it's some insane number of Nintendo yeah so it's something crazy yeah, yeah. but it, it actually didn't beat the ps2 yet i don't think but anyway, so no, Switch, is selling, yet, no. Switch is selling very well. Um, yeah. Maybe it was the PS3. I don't know. There's some console that did like bonkers numbers that nobody's beat yet. Um, mm-hmm. I think they just make more money. Now, a lot of people are concerned about like the sanctity or the, not the sanctity. That's, that's a little incorrect word usage. Um, the, just having exclusives, having a reason to own an Xbox console. And Microsoft, yeah. from a business perspective, they're just like, well, we have this install base on our Xbox console. We have a huge install base on PC. We're expanding to Steam. We're doing all these right. things to get our games in more places than ever before. Uh, the problem is we need those 30 million people, like let's say there's a, a 10% conversion rate or something like that, to people who see that game on the platform. That's a lot more sales in their pocket. And they know yes. this. I I think they're less worried about some of the games. Now, if they start doing first party, then I don't know what that means in terms of consoles. I think the next iteration of consoles will be all digital anyway. And I think yeah, in the future, because console sales haven't grown tremendously, and both the console manufacturers know that. You can talk about how you've, you're having record-breaking PlayStation sales, but at the end of the day... Yeah you're probably going to cap out around 150 million units. And that's the same amount of units that a lot of the old consoles were selling are capping out at. So mm-hmm. the growth is yeah. so minimal. Meanwhile, mm-hmm. PlayStation's talking about mobile and PC because those are growth markets, big growth markets. Yep. And it, it's it's sort of weird to, to talk about that with people who listen to the show or follow me on Twitter because... I think they lose sight of what what the bigger picture is, and I don't know if you agree with me on all this, but there's, there's a no, I, I do. There's there's like a passion, isn't there? Like a, I mean, you could call it fanboy or whatever, but um, it, it's it's also like if you've invested in PlayStation at uh, Xbox for like twenty years and you have a big digital library and stuff, you get nervous. Like, what's the future of the hardware platform here? Like, what's the future of my games and all that sort of stuff? But I think. Microsoft's not one to sort of just ditch people. So I, I can't imagine, even with like the Zune and um, Groove Music and all that sort of stuff, they always have like a path mm-hmm. um, if they do sort of, and then this is talking to the, the most unlikely scenario of them dropping Xbox, you know, this, this is where this is where the passionate fans go to, like right? it's the end of the Xbox, doom and gloom. Um, but if you were to go that way, it, yeah, it's, it's not going to happen. But um, But I can see why people get nervous about it. Um, because it is like, okay, you've done one, like you do Hi-Fi Rush, where does it end? Mm-hmm. Like that, that's the big question. I think they need to come out and explain that carefully. Um, cause I, I do, I do think Hi-Fi Rush is definitely going to be there. Yeah. I do think Sea of Thieves, um, I know, I know for a fact that there's a big one that I think a lot of people will be very surprised at, um, that will be going to PlayStation as well. Um, and it, so, so, in addition to High Five Rush and Sea of Thieves, there's a big one that's going to PlayStation. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and I think people will be will be very surprised at that one. Was it so. in the last Dev Direct? Can you give me a hand? I cannot. I cannot Does say. The main protagonist. I don't want to give any hints either way. Does the protagonist <laughs> wear a hat. <laughs> oh, oh uh, Indiana yeah. Jones. <laughs> I I cannot say. I I, I don't want to hint either way. Okay, got it. <laughs> Um, or a helmet, but yeah, I mean, does he wear a green helmet? No, I'm just 
<laughs> is he exploring planets? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, that's, that's yeah, no, I think, I think people, it, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what other ones they do, I think, um, mm. and how they position it. Well, um, but you can understand like financially the incentives there. Um, and obviously don't forget they've just spent like, what was it? 69, nearly $69 billion on Activision Blizzard. Um, that wasn't just to suddenly sell more Xbox consoles. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, like I think a lot of it was, was the mobile stuff. Um, so getting a lot more games on mobile, there's a lot more revenue there, opportunities. You see it with Call of Duty. Um, we, we've seen it plenty of times. Um, and then there's also the opportunity there of, of they're publishing that across platforms and can they experiment there as well? Like there's, I think there's definitely a shift in strategy. We've seen it with the leadership changes. Um, they'd be more hands-on with Activision Blizzard as well. If you notice with mm -hmm. Bethesda, they kind of left them to it, right? Um, and obviously, Redfall happened. That wasn't a great look for for Xbox um, console exclusives. So, um, so I think they're being they're being a bit more strategic with with this uh, Activision one. So, so you mean everything um, that they said was accurate? Like what they testified about focus on mobile and everything is is true? Yeah, I mean they downplayed the whole "oh we're in third place" like mm -hmm. thing. You know that was a bit some theatrics there um but i mean it is kind of the reality right like how how do you grow that console base it's, it's difficult you, you got you'll get people that will argue would well, you don't grow it if you put all your games on playstation which yeah sure um but do you grow it by putting those games on playstation and then people pay the 70 80 bucks whatever they'll pay for it um and then see oh actually I could get it on game pass and like, is that a shift for the next generation? Is that a consideration for anyone thinking about switching? Cause it's a hard process to switch now as well. If you with libraries built up and you have friends using the consoles, all that sort of stuff, but it does, I think there's still a lot of people that don't really know that game pass exists that own a PlayStation or own an Xbox. So I think that there's some of that, um, but it's definitely the, the Activision stuff is definitely for, 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 for the future, you know, like beyond, um, where a time when these consoles may not exist anymore, um, whether they be PCs or in the cloud or yeah, I, I was gonna, on your face. I was going <laughs> to ask you the future that I always saw is like, I think there will be a console. We know that Xbox is talking at least about making another console. That's delightfully all digital. Yeah. PlayStation went all digital with an optional optical drive that you can still buy. So there being a little bit yeah. about game preservation, but their next console, I imagine, uh, I could imagine it not having that option and you just use your PlayStation, yeah, potentially, yeah. PlayStation 5. Uh, do you think there's, there's a time, I guess we're already kind of there, where these companies move towards an app or some sort of thing that you install on your computer or on your phone. Xbox already has that infrastructure built. I imagine that. Yeah. I, I would be interested to see if uh, PlayStation does it. I don't know that. I think Nintendo's sort of playing their own game right now. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, with the next Nintendo play. just yeah. yeah, they just do what they do, right? Like mm -hmm. they're they're immune from the rest of the market <laughs> essentially. Yeah, they're like um, we make more than enough money on the games that we make. They sold like twenty four million copies of of Poke the last yeah. Pokemon, which wasn't highly reviewed. So, um, no, yeah. Uh, yeah, I am curious if we end up there. Do you think that's where we're going? Yeah, I mean, I think eventually, um, like, it, the thing is, everyone's experience of cloud gaming is varied at the moment. Um, that depends on your own internet at home, mm -hmm. what, like where you live in the world, um, so, so many different factors. And also, it just depends on what you're used to as well. Like, I'm used to PC gaming at 240 hertz. Yeah. Um, whereas if I'm used to a console at, like, 30 hertz or 60 hertz, um, then you know i i'm, I'm going to be less like worried about the latency um but if you if you've ever used the uh, rtx 4080 nvidia geforce now stuff that stuff is like very impressive mm -hmm. um especially if you're on a good connection so i think the, the, there's promise there even though cloud gaming has definitely been in its infancy period for quite some time now um but i think once it matures yeah like xbox has been going that way um, and if you notice during FTC and Microsoft, like before that all sort of 
like halfway through the acquisition, Microsoft was making a bun- bunch of noise about cloud and saying we're going to put our library on Xbox Cloud Gaming, and they didn't do any of that. They kind of stepped it back. So I think they've they've stepped that back and put some people on other projects just to get through this regulatory stuff. But I think they'll ramp up the cloud stuff again um, for sure because that's. I mean, look at their revenue at the moment. They they just post their revenues, and most of it is cloud and server stuff. So that that should tell you where things potentially would go with with gaming one day. Um, nothing will ever be obviously native, but then it gets to the point where it's like, do I want this giant gaming PC and and, and that sort of stuff, or do I want this experience um, where it roams everywhere with me? I just turn advice on. If we ever get to that sort of period, then that's that's yeah they, that's when cloud will rule but still big question over it um but portables could be another thing that could bubble up mm-hmm. so to take that experience with you on the go anyway you don't have to rely on the internet so there's 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 different ways it could shift uh, depending on um how well amd does with its chip strategy i guess <laughs> yeah there were the there were the rumors yesterday that playstation's making a, like a real handheld not uh, yeah so not that. the other one people have wanted xbox to do yeah. one for years the steam steam deck has done very well there's a bunch of competitors in that space right now i i do wonder mm-hmm. if the the switch 2 is going to have uh a little bit more of a challenge like they have their amazing library of games that are exclusive to their platform yeah so they kind of got that going for them but they do have competitors in the space now, which is, which is good. I, I like competition. Maybe they yeah. will shake it up a little bit. It'd be interesting to see what they do for back compat. Um, especially because they're on the cartridge system at the moment, but if they're moving to like better hardware, they're going to need better physical media. Like they're going to have to have some sort of flash storage system or something because um, just because of the bandwidth stuff and just the size of games and all that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see what they do with back compare there um, and supporting cartridges or whatever they're going to support. So I think we'll we'll no doubt be finding out in the coming months. I, I suspect. So yeah, in the springtime. Yeah, yeah. likely. <laughs> yeah, I hope it seems. So. Yeah, I, I, to be honest, I actually thought it was going to happen before Christmas um, because there was so much stuff going around Gamescom. That was a big open secret um, about them showing that stuff off. Um, and yeah, so I thought they might maybe announce it a little bit earlier, but perhaps they're not quite ready. But it's definitely it's got shipped this year, right? Like you, you can look at the Switch sales; they've they've stagnated, and it's time. So I just imagine yeah. some guy on the show floor. He's like, "This is the Switch too. Like <laughs> it really is. Believe me." <laughs> and yeah. a few people wrote about. It, they're like, Magic. "Yeah, they were showing the the Switch too, <laughs> but it wasn't yeah. legit." No, that would be great. Yeah. And, uh, uh, it's gonna be interesting that one that's that's gonna shake things up so i think that's gonna be the biggest thing that happens in 2024 in terms of like new gaming stuff i think the new yeah. Nintendo console would be it uh, i am curious though what is going on with playstation uh, they have a lot of third party and when you actually look at their content yeah. lineup it's it's fine they they're subsidizing yeah. with a lot of third party titles the spider-man thing it was revealed yep. during recent state of play they showed a lot of stuff that's in the works, not a lot of it for this year. So mm-hmm. do you have any idea what's going on with their first party or what they're planning for the year? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. Like it, it does seem a little bit odd. I don't want to say light, but it's, it's, it's just different. Right. Um, and the state of the play the other night, like I'd say like, what was it? 25, 30% of that was for death stranding. And that's, that's a 2025 uh, game. Right. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, the, in terms of this year, I don't, I don't know. Like, I feel like they're going, they're going through some strategy shift and s- some, some rework of their studios and stuff. Um, we saw some of that with, with some of the leaks and just some of the layoffs, and which haven't really been widely reported actually with, with whatever they're doing with their studios, because um, they've had they've had some layoffs or potential layoffs and PlayStation. Some shifting around. Yeah. Yeah, that all happened. Um, you obviously had Start, the big one with Bungie as well. Started in October. Um, and I, I made a video right before yeah. it really started happening. And I'm like, what is going on at PlayStation right now? Because yeah. there were all these rumors and then they all happened like the day after. Like the layoffs started yeah. and it didn't really stop until December. And now Xbox is, yeah. it seems like everybody in January is kind of trying to get their books in order. And that's why we're seeing layoffs across the industry. And and make no mistake, yeah. I think the layoffs are terrible. They're scary. And it's yeah. not, yeah. especially when 
Microsoft comes out and they're like, oh, look how great we did. It's like, well, that's you just fired 1900 people. I don't feel yeah. particularly happy about this. You know, it doesn't no. it makes less sense to me than ever that you had to fire those people. So, um, yeah. It also feels like companies sort of stored up their layoffs just so that they didn't do them before the holiday period. Mm. You know, like it does, it does feel kinda like nice. Because it's kind of nice, but yeah, I, I, I guess, but it just seems like doomsday right at the moment, like January gone and there's just thousands of people that have been laid off. It's just, um, yeah, it's not, not a particularly good climate in, in tech gaming and just generally right now. So. No, yeah, hundred percent. And we sit in we sit in the weird position of all three of these layoffs things: gaming, tech, and media. Right, like that's the the three really getting hammered in terms of layoffs. So yeah, yeah. Uh, GameSpot just uh, some the other day. I think that was the recent one. And Sega on the on the gaming front. Those were the two yes, being reported. Yeah. I haven't looked at Twitter this morning, but uh, those are the two that I've seen. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah, it's just every day. You never know what you're gonna it is. walk into in the morning. You know, but bringing it back to playstation yeah what do you think they're gonna like they announced all these projects like concord was one that's supposed to be coming out this year what's up yeah that's is that the that's the first person shoot i have no idea what it is i know there was a spaceship (laughs) and they were going in space and it was very color colorful i think that's the one i'm thinking of okay yeah i think it's the pvp game um which actually i'm i am kind of interested in seeing um but what they got they got rise of the ronin uh, Hell Divers is coming right around the corner. I'm kind. Hell I think that looks interesting, but it's not like yeah, it's not God of War, you know. No, there's there's not there's nothing quite like that, is there? In the mix, like a Spider Man or a God of War. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know. Maybe they're just having a quiet year. <laughs> yeah, I think they're <laughs> gonna. Like... I think this is gonna be the big off year for them. What do you think? Yeah, it could. I I think that that seems like it. Um, unless they've got some surprise shadow drops planned. Um, I, I I I doubt it, um, but I think some of it is just they've obviously had a bit. Of, I mean, they, Jim Ryan's out, right? Like, oh yeah, they've they've had some strategy shifts, some some changes. Have they pushed back some games they might have announced, or they might be planning to announce? I don't know. Like, there's there's obviously something going on there. Um, it's just broadly across the industry right now. There's a lot of strategy shifting going on, and I think a lot of it is obviously the COVID boost is well and truly over. Um, and obviously all the layoffs and all that sort of stuff have happened. Um, and now it's like the dust is settling and it's like, where, where, what is the future? Um, and I think with PlayStation, it's, it's just interesting that they've, they've obviously been, um, talking about, um, mobile and, and PC as opportunities and now cloud. So they kind of are, I don't want to say they're following Microsoft, you know, but, but because they're not quite. Um, but there is, there's definitely some similarities in, in the strategies there. Um, I don't know that we'd ever see a PlayStation game on Xbox, you know, like a pure first party, you know, exclusive PlayStation game on Xbox um, anytime soon. But do they reduce the gap of the PC side? Um, do they put the games day and day on this, some of the description stuff? I don't know, like maybe some of that might come. Um, they started doing sort of like demos, haven't they, of, of certain games on... Yeah on the subscription service. So I don't know. I feel they feel it feels like they're experimenting with that stuff and the portal as well. Um, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of interesting stuff that they're doing. It's just their strategy doesn't seem as clear. Like it seems like they're testing the wars and figuring out where, where they should uh, invest in. So yeah, Jim Ryan definitely retired and nothing else happened that helped him make that decision. <laughs> I mean, yeah. like, I, I don't think he was fired, but I think he's just like, Clearly, there's more going on than just, oh, I'm just randomly going to retire. You're going to randomly retire at the peak of your career. So yeah. maybe he's getting out at the right time because you saw the writing on the wall or somebody asked him to go. Yeah. I don't know. We, I don't want to get into like fan theory territory, but it certainly seems to me like it, it was just suspicious timing. And then we see the restructuring. Yeah, definitely interesting timing. Yeah, and then we see the restructuring. Yeah. I think PlayStation is going to have a very difficult 2024, and I would say 2025. We don't really know right. what they have planned. They have some games in 2025, so I think they get the ball rolling again next year. And yeah. I want to be wrong, but that's what it. I think everyone's everyone's just sort of clearing the slate for 2025, right? Yeah. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto. Once that hits, it's going to be uh, you know people gonna, don't want to be around that. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And they, and the platform holders are going to love that as well. The amount of money they'll make out of that. So. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. But, <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so uh, the hardest question I think I had for you, Tom, was uh, what video game are yeah. you playing right now? I have been playing, um, weirdly, I've been playing the finals quite a bit. Oh, okay. Um, but I've also played, started playing Overwatch 2 again. I don't know why. Um, I, I I mainly do play first-person shooters, if I'm honest. I dabble with some other stuff. Um, I played, like, you know, a couple of hundred hours of Starfield before I finally got bored of it. Um, and I do, I do, I, I'm one of these people that picks up a game that will play it for, I don't know, 50 hours or something like that and then i'll drop it like or maybe not 50 hours maybe a little yeah. less than that but you, you know what that's i mean like fine uh, i think 50 hours you've gotten yeah. your fill yeah that's true i've been playing some power world actually i was gonna ask um which is kind of fun yeah i've been playing that with some friends um been trying to get a dedicated server set up because that has not been working properly through my firewall but um yeah that's been fun like I, I can see why people love it because this is what people have wanted out of Pokemon for like years, right? Like something different. Um, and I think it does, you know, what's interesting about it is there's always rumors Nintendo bring their games to PC and stuff. And, you know, everyone just emulates them on PC at the moment. So why not sell them on PC and all that? Like there's always been fan theory around that, but like, I wonder if they do start to think about pc at some some time because it's such an opportunity for money like they obviously did mobile um some mobile mm -hmm. um with some of their ip but like there's an opportunity there and i think power world has very clearly um revealed there's an opportunity for something slightly different that they might want to do i mean like on pc Pokemon perhaps. go also proved that to them true you know? yeah so yeah it was, that was huge it right? was weird so. that they just bailed on it yeah i know so yeah power has been fun um I, I can see why it's it's gone massive so it's great the gameplay loop is just fun yeah. now how do you feel about yeah. the drama around it basically it started yeah where, like oh they used ai generation to make these that's just ridiculous it, there's no indication yeah. or no like he made some tweets about how it could be used but like they didn't go model those characters using 3D imaging or, yeah. or AI imaging. So that seems pretty nonsensical. Then there's uh, yeah. claims that they rip models and adjust the models. And then even that seems harder to prove because of the change in the vertices. If, if you've done 3D modeling, yeah. there's like individual points and the people right. refer to it as topography online. Uh, they look quite right. different. How do you feel about all that drama? Yeah, and it was, the, the other part of the drama was capturing humans in the game and stuff, um, which I think was probably well, the only just, one that I'm that like... That seems like a fun mistake, yeah. to be totally honest. Like, Yeah, well, I don't know. It looks like it was definitely supposed to be in okay. there because um, of all the dialogue you get when you, when you do it. Um, oh, all right. But, like, yeah, I mean, like, I think the models and stuff, I, like, come on, let's be honest, it's very clear that some of these are heavily inspired, if not, possibly close. copied whatever pretty close yeah there's a there's an eevee in there and you know like it, come on it's, it's pretty obvious but i don't know if it's like they've ripped the models you know like, i don't know if they've gone to that length but they've clearly had an idea in mind which everyone calls it right pokemon with guns mm -hmm. um and they've they've gone out and done that um but i think it's just you know uh what did steve jobs say great artists copy or, or good artists copy great artists still so yeah i mean that is that, that that's pretty much everyone's inspired by something you know like any, any artist will be inspired by a previous work um so i think that there's a level of that this is a little close <laughs> in, in in certain areas but i don't know some I, I feel like there's also a lot just you have to have a controversy out of everything right mm -hmm. like there's there's always got to pick holes in everything these days um so there's always going to be a bit of that as well um, so I think it's a bit, bit, bit of a mix of both. At the end of the day, I think there's the whole conversation about did they, didn't they? Uh, but is yeah. the game fun? It is. And that's what most people care about at the end of the day. There's like this, yeah. this side thing that's happening, but do you care enough not to buy the game? If you're one of those people, you are 0.01% of the market, right? Yeah. Like it's such a small market. Any boycott, I remember the Call of Duty boycott. There was a group called We're Boycotting Call of Duty <laughs> on Steam. 
as soon as that game launched, I think it was Modern Warfare 2, all of them were playing Call of Duty. Like, it doesn't yeah. hold. So, like, what you say you're going to do online, it just, a lot of people end up not yeah. following through on that. And then when you actually start playing Pal World, you're like, well, I didn't really, I didn't really like all that drama stuff, but this game's really fun and I'm going to play it anyway. So... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like any game that you get addicted to. You like, oh, I hate it, uh, uh, but I'm addicted to it. Like, it's it's that sort of relationship. But it's also, it, don't forget the pricing of this game as well. It's actually a reasonably priced yep. game, which like for for what you're getting, um, which I think we're we're also not used to seeing as well. Um, so that's why people would just go and buy it just to try it, you know, because it's at that level of pricing that where it's like you know, it's, it's more affordable for people as well. Um, I think that's definitely driven sales and, and interest as well. Cause if it was priced at like 70 bucks, it might be less, less people buying it than the, what is it? 12 million. Yeah. I mean, it changes every five seconds really, it's so, but it's a lot. Yeah. Gameplay is king. Old adage, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Tom, I think I'm out of time. I got to go eat breakfast and stuff like that. And you got to, what time is it there? Sure. Five? It is nearly, nearly 5 p.m. on a Friday, so time for time for a beer. Beer, all right. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah, that's what we do over here. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining me. What do you want people to go to? Like, do, you, do they follow you on Twitter? Do they go to The Verge? Yeah, on, on Twitter, I'm at Tom Warren on Twitter, also at TheVerge.com, um, obviously where you'll find all my articles. And I'm also on YouTube slash Tom Warren as well, but I'm not as active there. So I, I hear yeah. that. Well, thank you for joining me. I'm going to do the outro thing. Yeah, no worries. It, sometimes it breaks. Who knows what's going to happen this time? Okay. Thank you so much to the members and Tom Warren for joining. Tom Warren for joining the channel, members for supporting the channel. If you want to become a member, you can click that join button at the bottom. Tom, thank you so much. We're going to get out of here. I'll no have worries. you on again whenever we can figure out the time if, you, if you're down. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Bye for now, everybody. Cool.